For most triathletes, the swim leg is the most intimidating part of the race, and it should be. More fatalities occur during the swim than in any other part of the triathlon. The open water can be harsh, powerful, and unforgiving. It's unpredictable. It can make even the strongest swimmers appear weak and vulnerable. Don't take the swim lightly. Be prepared. Know the conditions you're dealing with and learn how to best deal with them. So we're out here the day before the race, just kind of surveying the scene. We like to come out and get as much information and check it out, check out the course as much as possible. We normally go onto the race website prior to coming, check out which, which way the course might be going, get the lay of the land, see where the buoys might be. This is the location. We know that we're going to be headed out here and making a left-hand turn around the, around the end of the pier. So we're out here around the same time that the race is going to be going off tomorrow morning. So chances are that the tide's going to be very similar, very comparable today as it will be tomorrow. So just kind of checking it out, looking at the waves, getting a sense for how we might tackle this race, and really just getting some information so that when we get here tomorrow morning, we're not going to see it for the first time on the day of the race. Always makes things a little bit more comfortable and confident. Hello, I'm Andrew Caesar. I'm a lifeguard over here for LA County beaches. Before you ever do a swim race, it's a good idea in your routine to do a bottom check and check the bottom of the ocean for the uh, contour and if there's inshore holes because you don't want to be running full speed and hit an inshore hole and break an ankle. A lot of guys have done that. So you want to check the bottom before the race. So the first thing you're going to want to do is high step after the bottom check, of course. You're not going to be moving anywhere in the water if you do a regular running stride because you're going to be exerting way too much energy going straight up and your foot has to push that water. So that's using a lot of energy. As lifeguards, we're always running in and out of the surf to make rescues, do training. And so what we basically do is called high step and you gotta get your ankles out. Your ankles out and get over the water. And that way, you are exerting a lot of energy by getting higher, your, your feet higher, but you're also moving through the water a lot quicker. So how was your uh, workout this morning? Oh man, I'm exhausted. Big run swim run this morning. Three miles in the deep sand, two mile uh, swim, and then a race to the finish. Two mile race to the finish hard pack. Smoked Chad though, made my day. Wow, I love it when that fool gets beat. Oh yeah, now I'm getting my bike time in. <laughs> gotta, gotta get ready for that, that try this weekend. You're, You're gonna do it? You really wanna beat me, don't you? I do. I do. Well, guess what? I think I'm going to pull the trigger on that new Trek. Nice. How much is that going to cost you? Here's a Campbell title. What are you exercising in the middle of the day for? Oh, John, getting ready for the try this weekend. Try. Come out. Show us what you got. Show us your medal, John. 100 bucks says I beat you and you by at least 10 minutes. How long is it? Like 20 minutes? Why don't we put some real man's money on it? Let's call it 8,000. <laughs> Andrew, what's up? Hey, I, I need a wetsuit for Saturday. You have one? A wetsuit. I don't whatever surfing whatever it's just a wetsuit right same thing look okay I'm gonna do this triathlon all right I agreed to do it so I need something to do it in that's all anyway it should be over in like I don't know an hour or something right look I'm gonna go there I'm gonna swim around a couple of buoys that's it and then you know you put on your shoes and go running I guess I don't know what do they got on me honestly it's a joke Anyway, let me pick it up on Thursday, okay? All right, Thursday. I've seen triathlons where there's a couple hundred people all starting at once, 
and it's everyone's on an equal playing field until they get about 50 yards out into the ocean where the breaker happens and then all of a sudden the field is split in half just because they reach that first obstacle and half the field doesn't know how to deal with it and they're stopped in their tracks and they start floating backwards and then the people who have who've successfully navigated that first break are off and swimming. I see a lot of people who don't know how to deal with the waves where they hit the breaker and they stand there where they try to go over top of it or try to swim over top of it um, without really realizing how powerful even a smaller wave can be. If a wave is breaking on top of you, there's really no way to swim over top of it. Your goal should always be to get underneath all those breakers. Get down, dive down underneath it. The bigger the wave is, the lower you might need to go. The waves are big enough, it'll stop some people right in their tracks. Some people call it dolphining uh, or porpoising. Don't be scared to touch the bottom with your hands because you don't want to hit your head you're this high and you dolphin in, you go and you grab sand, move up and do it again. Grab sand, move up, do it again. I know that everyone's going to one point, that first turn, so I, I focus on the buoy and sight on that first turn buoy. I look pretty frequently, so every, every couple strokes I'll, I'll lift my head up and just get a quick glimpse of the big orange buoy so I know I'm going in the right direction and then just focus on myself and finding my stroke getting really calm, go straight at the buoy, wherever my line happens to be, I'm, I'm confident in the line and the start that I've committed myself towards. And even if my competition is doing something different, I'm not really concerned with them at this moment. I'm trying to go straight for the buoy in the best way that I know how. And more often than not, when I get to that buoy, everyone else who might have, might have started, you know, 30, 45 seconds prior, they might have been 100 meters away from me. Right when we hit the buoy, everyone comes together. And that's when the race really starts to happen. After that first turn is when we start to consider the pack dynamics and positioning around in the pack and trying to find a good draft line and we organize ourselves to kind of complete the rest of the swim. Got it? Thank you. It feels a little tight. <laughs> that I think is important to, to realize, especially for newer triathletes who don't have a lot of experience in ocean, open water, triathlon swims, is you, you've got to have an expectation that when the swim portion of the race is over, that when you do go to transition from swimming to standing up for the run out of the water, you're probably gonna be feeling a little queasy and it, and it might be very difficult for you to, to find some balance and find your legs on the run out. So if you're feeling some fatigue towards the end of your swim, you want to be preparing for that little extra effort that's gonna be required as you're coming in. So catching your breath, maybe slowing down your pace of the swim a little bit, starting to feel comfortable and confident about what's gonna be required on this final section and the exit of the swim. So that when you go to, to either catch a wave or lift yourself up and start running, you're gonna have the energy and the air and you're gonna feel confident in your ability to do that. When you're swimming into the surf, when you take a stroke, take a look back to see if there's any waves coming. Some guys flip on their back. If it's a big day, you could flip on your back and do some backstroke and see if there's a wave coming. Because if there's a wave coming, it's a free ride. You kick as hard as you can. You try to get as long as you can because it'll pick your speed up, you know, and then you drop in. Always, you know, have your arms in front of you so you don't hit your head. You can definitely hit your head in conditions like this, low tide, shallow. Oh, for sure, fire away is you hit the bottom with your stroke and then you're up. Once you uh, get to about, you know, thigh high, high step back in and have enough energy, you know, for that last oomph to really hit it 100% run up the beach. 
That's about it, yeah. Depending on your swimming ability and history, the length of the swim in your triathlon, and your desire to improve your swim, you'll need to devote some quality time each week to properly develop your swim. And quality time means not just putting in enough aerobic training to help you finish the swim comfortably, it also means devoting some time to your swimming technique so you swim smarter, not just harder. After a good warm-up of 400 to 800 meters, one of the biggest areas of improvement you can make in your swim time is often in developing your kick. Getting a fast kick is a long-term project involving increasing ankle flexibility, improving kicking technique by kicking tighter with a faster cadence, and learning to kick in both directions, which takes tremendous leg fitness. It's always a good idea to do some kicking without a board and practice streamlining at the same time. Kicking on your side is a good way to learn to kick in both directions. Since there's no longer an up or down kick, it'll enable you to feel the pressure on the water with your feet at all times. Never letting go of that pressure will help condition your legs and sustain your baseline speed while swimming. With a good kicker, there's never a moment's rest. The kick starts from the core down and keeps the knee bend relatively small to reduce drag the feet push in one direction then in the other never ceasing to apply pressure or force on the water spending a small part of your swim practice time doing drills will also pay big dividends the one arm drill is one of the most important drills for setting up the underwater pull correctly what happens in the very first few tenths of a second after the hand enters the water will have a huge impact on the rest of the pull the most important thing to watch in the sequence is how the shoulder internally rotates. The hand drops directly below the elbow while the elbow remains very close to the surface. From that point rearward during the propulsive phase, there's just a slight movement of the hand toward the midline as it barely goes beneath the surface of the body. It isn't necessary to train often in open water. Most of your training should be done in the pool where you can monitor your speed and your stroke rates more accurately. Competing in the open water is very different than in the pool and therefore requires that you train in the pool differently than for a pool race. One of the biggest differences is the need to vary your speed. In a pool race where you don't have to contend with the variables and challenges of the open water, you can establish and hold your pace throughout the race. Not so in the open water. You may find that there are times when you need to step up your pace considerably to improve your position. If you're a stronger swimmer, you'll likely need to swim considerably faster to get out in front of the pack, or to avoid a draft, or to catch a group that is leading ahead of you. Training with variable speed is an excellent way to prepare you for the open water race. Swimming eight by 150s, for example, with the first 50 fast, the second 50 moderately fast, and the third 50 smooth, somewhere around 60 to 70% of your maximum speed, will help you become a better open water swimmer. Nice, Holden. First 50, 27, with stroke rate of 110. 
second 50, 29, stroke rate 78, and last 50, 31.5 with stroke rate of uh, 65. The right preparation begins by going to bed early, getting a good night's sleep, and setting your alarm early enough several hours before the start of the competition. Start to visualize yourself doing well. Take some slow, deep breaths. Stand up and stretch your shoulders, your lower back, and scapula. Think streamlined like a swimmer should. You should have your sport back already packed from the night before with all the needed gear and nutrients for race day. Don't eat as much for breakfast as you would on a training day, but eat nourishing foods that you're used to. Begin to hydrate your body and continue hydrating it throughout the day. It's normal to feel a little nervous, and that will change your rate of digestion. You may not feel like eating, but you must eat. Arrive early to the competition site where you'll have plenty of time to park, evaluate the starting and transitional sites, prepare and test your equipment, and most importantly, warm up your body before the race. Always take a warm-up swim before your open water race, no matter how cold the water or what the conditions are. Ideally, you should warm up for 15 to 20 minutes, getting your heart rate up to where it will be during the race for a few of those minutes. Your warm-up should occur no more than an hour before the race starts. If the start gets delayed for any reason, then get back in the water and warm up again. Doing dynamic stretches, that is, moving the joints and muscles while simultaneously stretching them, is the best way to stretch on race day. You should dynamically stretch the ankles, hips, hamstrings, shoulders, and back. Take a few maximal breaths to fully expand and release air from the lungs. Push the air out from your core, feeling the strength that you've developed. Before racing or diving in for an open water swim, always do a bottom check. There have been too many broken ankles from inshore holes or serious wounds from reef, rocks, glass, or other debris during this brief sprint to the water. It's okay to be a little nervous before the race, but you shouldn't be panicky. Physical preparation for the race is vitally important, but so is the mental preparation. If you find yourself getting too nervous before the start, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and try to relax. You need to be in control of your race. As you run into the water, always use the high-stepping technique. Don't drag your feet through the water, but lift them over the top and to the side to avoid slowing down. Know how to deal with waves. Even the smallest wave is very powerful and can knock you down. Once you're in deep enough water, it's always better to dive beneath the wave, holding your hands in front of you, but below the level of your head to prevent hitting the bottom. Most serious health issues occur at the beginning of the swim. If you feel you're out of your comfort level, whether from a physical or emotional state, don't try to be a hero. Call for the race safety officials or the lifeguards standing by. Opt out of the race. Your life is far more important than your pride.